All right, guys, here's what we're making today. The Roadie by Katie Landmade. I am in love with this pattern. I am in love with this pattern. You have a front zipper pocket, two front slip pockets. You have a huge zipper pocket that goes all the way. You have two handles. You could put a, she gives you directions for a crossbody if you want it. You have a zipper top closure. And on the inside you have another zipper pocket. Two, three slip pockets. Two for pens and one regular. And then you have a water bottle holder. And you have, I put the key fob in to hold your keys. Absolutely adorable. Go grab the pattern and let's get started with the Roadie by Kate Handmade. Let's go. Hi everyone, this is Barbara Cheese Designs. And you've already seen what we're making today, the Roadie. But here is the front of the pattern. It is a pattern by K. Dale Handmade. Kathy at K. Dale Handmade is, um, she's a great pattern designer, really. So I received this in the bag making B box this month. So I have all the materials in the box. Um, so I'm just gonna use those materials today. I've not made the bag before. I think it's a pretty beginner friendly bag. I don't know what she calls it. Let me just look real quick. Um, I don't know. Um, so what we got is the uh, one inch webbing for the handle. I'm gonna use one of my black matte um, tags, Jeannie's Designs tags. We did get a uh, Your Very Best with the V on it, cork tag from Heartwood and Hyde. I have four zipper pulls with pink, hot pink zipper uh, bees on it, cute. And then a bunch of black matte rivets. You can't even see them, they're so tiny. Tiny, tiny little guys. And then uh, four zippers that are pre-cut for us, which is fabulous. I'll go over those. Well, I won't give away the measurements actually. Um, I am using one piece of Decaville Light or heavy. Actually, this is Lux Fuse, the same as Decaville Light or Decaville Heavy. It's pretty close to either one, kind of in, in between. Um, so I use that. And then for my pieces, again, I'm using what came in the box. So piece A, I have two exterior pieces, and this is Lux Bonded Nylon. Love it. So that's piece A. Piece B, piece B is um, the bottom accent, and I've done that out of the black that came with the box. Piece C is the slip pocket back. I'm doing that out of what came with the box, and this is um, Lux Nylon Light. Just be aware, it frays like crazy. So if you're using it for anything, you just need to be aware of that. It's not that difficult, but it does fray pretty bad. Uh, piece D, slip pocket front accent, I did out of the black. Piece uh, E is the zip pocket top, one out of the lining and one out of the exterior. Cute. Piece F is the slip pocket bottom, one out of the exterior and one out of the lining. Piece G is the slip pocket back lining out of the lining material. Piece I, oh, nope, piece H is uh, four zipper tabs and I just did that out of the exterior. Piece I is the full pocket lining and there's two of those out of the lining material. Piece J is the interior facing. There's two of those, and I did those out of the exterior fabric. Piece K is the interior main, and I did that out of the lining. Piece L is in uh, the bottle sleeve, and that is optional. I'm gonna do it. Um, so I did one uh, out of the black and one out of the lining. 
piece M interior slip pocket. There's two of those out of the lining. Piece N is interior zipper pocket. There's two of those out of the lining. Piece O is the zipper, recessed zipper facing. There's four of those, and I did that out of the exterior. Piece P is the recessed zipper end tab out of the exterior. And piece R is the swivel D-ring key minder, which is optional. I'll probably do that out of the uh, exterior. And this is this is for the bottom stabilizer. That's what this is for. And then the webbing I showed you and the zippers I showed you. Now, there's no other uh, uh, interfacing for this. If you're using something other than some bonded nylon, like cotton, I probably would use interfacing. And she does give you directions for that. All right, The Roadie by Kate Dale Handmade, and it's the bag-making bee box, mystery box of the month. So let's get started. All right, so take two piece O's and fold your, fold one down as she instructs in the pattern. You're gonna mark a line and then fold down to that line. And then you're gonna lay your zipper um, where she tells you to in from this one end over here. Your facing is right side up, but your zipper is right side down. And then I'm using double side tape, so I'm just gonna sandwich these two. And the other thing is by using, I, I did tape. So if the if it's too short or too long, you can adjust it, which is the beauty of that using tape. And then we're gonna sew uh, down this end and across. And the seam allowance is, uh, let's see what she says. Oh yeah, okay. A seam allowance in the pattern. Using a four stitch length right now, which is my go-to. All the way down. We are going to trim this so we can get a nice corner, just like that. And then we'll turn that out. And if you need to, use a, a poking tool or whatever you have to get a nice corner there. And then we'll clip those together. This is very similar to any other facing, just so you know. And then we'll top stitch and close off the ends. And we'll repeat that with the other side of the zipper. Eighth of an inch. 
and stops the leak. And then I'm gonna close off this end. Draw edge in too. So that's what you have. And now we're gonna repeat that with these other two facing pieces. There you go, that looks really good. All right, so the next step is piece R, which is a um, key minder. So I just divided mine down the middle and put a piece of double side tape on each side. Now I don't have any half inch de um, silver glass and it didn't come with any. So I'm just gonna um, finagle my piece R and make it a little bit wider so that it fits. Yeah. And doesn't it's not too too loose. Because <clears throat> this piece was cut for a, I didn't think about it, and I didn't realize that they didn't send the, the hardware for this. Not a big deal. There we go. So now that'll work. I'm going to just uh, close that off and uh, do an eighth of an inch down each side. And then we'll close it and put the, the uh, swivel clasp on. going to fold that over. She gives you a measurement to do it. So do whatever you feel comfortable with. And we are going to put a little rivet there, but I am going to put one little row of stitching across there as well. So one of the rivets they sent for use are just itty bitty little things. I don't know if these are, these are like, uh, uh, 
these are like, a, let's see. I think these are, these are like four millimeter rivets. They're really tiny. I like them, but they're very tiny. Little guys. So let's put a rivet in there. It's right in the center. We cleaned today. Yep. Alright, I go press that. And then our little key minder will be done. I don't know what noise is going on out there. I mean, let's All right, so here's your little key fob minder. It's got a little rivet in there. It's cute as a bug. Alright, now we're gonna do our zipper. So take your, your one of your zippers, which she tells you which size it should be. And we're gonna make sure you already put your zipper pull on. Just trying to get mine on there, right? And we're gonna stitch, so I have both of them on there, on both ends. And I'm gonna do the seam allowance in the pattern. On both ends and then we'll fold those over and do just a little bit of eighth inch top stitching oh I might be getting ready to need my bobbin changed I'm trying to do a little bit of a bobbin dump. Let's see if I can get through this one. I don't know. So those little tabs are right sides down on both the front and the back of your zipper. Alright, so there's our tab with our zippers, our zipper pull. Now you're going to need pieces E and F. So this is piece, I wrote it on the corner of one of these. This is piece F. So take that right side up and we're gonna lay our zipper closing to the left, right side down. And I'm gonna center these real quick here. Uh, I'm gonna do this one too. So this is piece E. And then I'm just gonna mark the center of my zipper. That it is. Uh, I'll do it this way. Yeah. All right, so this is piece F, my zipper, Hole is to the left, and I am just going to clip that in place, and I'm going to do a little basting stitch rather than use tape this time. So I'll just baste it eighth of an inch in place. Man, that zipper pull is huge, so let me get it out of the way. Eighth of an inch basting, and then we'll put piece E on top of that. And she says that your tabs will be too long, and that's okay. They'll hang over. They now take over. your uh, piece, I think it's F lining, and lay that right sides together with your zipper sandwiched in between. And then we'll sew the full seam allowance, and then we'll fold this over. And this is the um, 
Flux nylon white, which frays like crazy. I don't like it. I would never choose to buy it. It's alright. It's pretty. You got it so beautifully. But it just frays way too much for my purposes. I know I've mentioned that several times. I don't need me to. I don't mean to be a negative Nancy. And nothing against Nancy. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, all right, let's fold that over and we'll top stitch. Okay. And then we're gonna repeat that for the top piece. E is an Edgar. I was talking on the phone recently with somebody and I had to spell something. And I had to come up with a word for each letter. It was, I was cracking myself up. Top stitch next to the zipper. that Tony was listening and he was laughing his, you know what, off at me. So I started laughing and the poor person on the other end of the phone, I felt bad for him. Yeah. All right, now let's put this one on. You know what, let's just do some double side tag. Let's Let's give it and put both pieces on at the same time, get it all done, rather than do a basting stitch. Okay. So this right side of top piece E is sandwiching the zipper in between. And then we're going to do the same thing back here with our piece E that is the lining piece. This pink is really gorgeous and it's so, it sews beautifully and it's so nice and soft. I actually do like it. I wish it didn't. I guess you can get it in the other um, nylon, so I would assume. Where is that? Fold that up and top stitch next to the top portion of the zipper. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Cute. So, I don't know if you know, but this, this uh, hot pink Leslie thread was named after Leslie at Jolie Lee. She and Kasaya have been friends for a while, and so she named that hot pink Leslie. <laughs> it's so cute. All right, next step. All right, so now with our zipper pocket, that's what you have so far, um, and you can cut off your excess zipper tabs. And then you're gonna take your piece G and lay it right side up and we're gonna lay this completed zipper pocket right on top and we're gonna baste all the way around it, which will make the pocket.
All right, so now with this uh, completed zipper pocket, we're gonna take piece D and lay it right sides down on the right side of the zipper pocket and stitch that with the seam allowance in the pattern. And this went off a little, so I'm just gonna go back over it one more time. There we go. It went a little askew on me. Now we are not top stitching this yet. However, she does say to press that. This is nylon and I'm not pressing it. You could, but we're gonna take piece, um, C and we're gonna lay this on top and it should be a pretty good fit. I think mine's a little too long and that's okay. And we're gonna sew that across the top at a seam allowance in the pattern. Huh, cute. All right, let's do it. Be mindful of where your zipper pull is. The other thing about this uh, Lux Nylon Light is it stretches a little. The way it is. Okay, we're gonna fold that up. <sighs> Alright, next. Alright, so once you've attached your uh, PC, you're gonna fold that wrong sides together. So I stitched this across the top and then I folded it back wrong side together and we're gonna stitch across the top, stitch across the top. Some of your seams get kind of thick right in here, so just go slow. Like right there, it's pretty thick. Now we're going to add this piece to one of our piece A's. We're going to lay that right along the bottom. Now remember, we haven't top stitched right here yet because we're going to do that now that we've got it attached to A. <laughs> Cute. Kathy at K Dale Handmade. She has great patterns. I've not met her in person. I hope to someday. She's so she seems very sweet on her uh, channel. We're gonna base down the sides and across the bottom, and then we're gonna top stitch here, which creates two slip pockets. I'm gonna do the outside pieces first. A slip pocket there you have a slip pocket there which I don't know if that's big enough for one of the big cell phones today or not this would be and then you have a zipper pocket here uh, cute all right next step all right now take pattern piece uh, bottom accent panel B is in boy and attach it right sides together with your the piece A that we just completed and stitch that together and we're going to turn that over and top stitch. Yeah, I 
know my machine is, so I need the oil. It needs some oil. I should have oiled before I started this. That's okay. The old fabricator needs a little bit of oil. She's knocking. Okay, and then turn that, fold that down, and top stitch with the seam going down. has Rocky on out there. I need to go turn the TV down. He's not even here right now. Huh. Okay, so that's what you have. Now, we need to um, add our handles. Now, I, I guess I'm just going to use this whole piece I'll just use this whole piece and cut it in half. You could add crossbody straps. I'm not gonna do that. This this bag doesn't really need it. It's nice for a shoulder bag, honestly. And you know, everything's a crossbody anymore. It's kind of nice not to have everything you make or use be a crossbody. That's what I say. Okay, we're gonna measure in the distance she tells you to in the pattern on each side and make a mark. And so she also tells you Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So you're laying your um, strap inside that line. And then she tells you to make sure, doesn't matter, you can do whatever you'd like, but that you have a certain distance here between your straps, which I do. It's perfect. All right, let's just sew these on. There's, make sure you don't have your strap uh, twisted. Cute. Okay. Oh, she says add your logo tag here. All right, let me do that. Hold All right, on. so here's our front panel. The one thing I did go back and fix, I don't know why she tells you to do that, but I'm sure there's a reason for it, so I did it. On your handle, leave about... Uh, three quarters of an inch or whatever you you know up uh, from on top of the panel a and then I put my tag on there so that is that front panel is complete isn't that cute all right so that's done now take your remaining piece a lay it right side up take one of your lining piece eyes and lay it right side down and she tells you exactly where to mark for your zipper from the right side. I know it kind of feels kind of weird, but this there's going to be a zipper back here, which is kind of nice, actually. Uh, stitch all the way around your box, your zipper box. How far in, how far up from the bottom, and how far down from the top. And just like any other zipper pocket, you're going to make your hole. 
sew around. I have a hard time seeing it because my pen didn't mark it clearly. And then, just like any other zipper pocket, we're going to cut down the middle. So, make a slit down the middle and open that up. Cut down the middle and then cut your corners, but don't go through your stitching. So, have a very sharp set of scissors. These Kai scissors. They're really not cheap, but they are, they last forever. And they're very sharp. All right, so now turn that through, just like any other zipper pocket. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to iron this or not. Let's see. I doubt it. to uh, use some double-side tape, which I don't really want to do. Let's just clip it for a minute here. Uh, I am gonna actually try and iron it. I don't know that this nylon will stay where you want it to. So, I'm gonna try it. I think my iron is hot behind me. But that's what you should have. So there's your hole on the outside and on the back. So I'm gonna turn around and iron it. All right, Mom. I did iron it and it, it did okay. Is it perfect? No, but that's okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna clip those in place. Then I, on your smallest zipper piece, with the zipper pull going towards the top, so this is how your piece is, and your zipper is going towards the top, your zipper pull, Put some double side tape on there. Take it off. And we're gonna place that inside our zipper panel here. And then do the bottom or the other side, however you wanna call it. Trying to keep my zipper pull out of the way because it's very big. And just get it on there as evenly as you can. It's really not too bad, actually. Perfect. And then we're going to stitch right all the way around. You know what, before I do this, I'm gonna check my bobbin. Oops. Oops, I just gotta change my bobbin. Yeah, I was almost out, so that's good. Okay, let me put a new bobbin in. I got it ready to go right here.
I overfilled my bobbin, so I'm pulling it out a little. Okay. I'm really kind of gun shy about putting my finger underneath there anymore. Wisely so. Mm -hmm. Thread everywhere. All right, now I should have plenty of bobbin to finish my bag. Now I am gonna pull these to the back, so I'm just gonna go slow to start. Pull my zipper out of the way. I'm using, I do that because I'm using such a highly contrasting thread color. Now here I am going to go back and forth across the end of my zipper. I don't always do that, but I do most of the time. Okay, get your zipper pull out of the way. Almost there. I almost backstitched. Pull these threads to the back and tie them off. And this one got caught. There we go. All right. Let's make sure it looks good. Yeah. There you go. Isn't oh. you guys? This is gonna be so cute. All right, next. Step. Okay, take your remaining lining piece I, and lay it right side up, and then lay your zipper pocket piece that you just created right on top of that. Then we're gonna baste all the way around. All right, so then take your remaining uh, bottom accent piece B and lay it right side down. Make sure your zipper pull is going up. And we're gonna stitch that together and turn it and top stitch it. Just like we did the other one. All right, so the next step is to attach your other handle and leave some up at the top and she tells you exactly where to measure to put your handle. Then we need to cut out what she tells you to in uh, these bottom corners. Now, this side is a little bit long, so I'm just going to trim that ever so slightly. 
and then I'm gonna mark on both front but front and back panels the uh, squares that she tells you to. So I added this one. I didn't do it on the other one yet, so I'll do it now too. Obviously it's a box corner bag when you cut things out like this. Okay, so there's one, beautiful. Let's do it to this one. And again, if you need to trim a little bit, go ahead and do that now. I mean, ever slight. I just lost my marketing pen, so I'll just use this one. <sighs> yeah, this one didn't mark. All right, so now we are going to lay our bottom seams on our both panels, right sides together, and we're gonna stitch that with the seam allowance in the pattern. She does give a nice tip, which I'm gonna show you. Uh, and it's actually very helpful. So I would recommend doing it, especially if you're a beginner. And even if you're not a beginner, I'd probably still do it. So we stick, we clip that together. But what she, her tip is to make sure that your handles align and do it now before you go any further to make sure that they're the same on both pieces. That'll be helpful and I'll, and I'll make it look better in the long run. So yeah, mine are. So you just want to make sure that on your both handles are uh, equal on both of your top panels. Sorry, I'm burning my light fabric. All right, but now Make sure you don't have your handles in the bottom, and we're going to sew that together at the seam allowance in the pattern. Just across the bottom, that's all we're sewing right now. Jackie, my little heavy breather. Jackie. All right, she's not gonna come in. Then we're gonna lay this open flat, and I'm gonna uh, iron this opened flat, and then I'm going to attach that stabilizer there out of my seams, just like that. So I'll do that off camera. All right, so I have my stabilizer attached there. It's a beautiful thing. And now we're turning it to the right side and we're gonna top stitch on either side of that seam at an eighth of an inch. On both sides.
All right, then we are going to put our sides together and stitch the sides, down the sides. Both sides. And both sides, you don't have a bit, there's no big seam allowances here. So when you're doing all your basting, just keep that in mind. You have a narrow seam allowance throughout the entire pattern, which is okay. You just have to be cautious of where you're basting. So. Because you don't want your basting stitches to be seen later. All right, let's sew down each side. There's one, and I just, I was making sure I caught all my basting stitches, I did. And let's do the other side. I'm looking for my um, zipper pull, make sure it's out of the way. Right now we're gonna do our corners, our box corners. Oh, that didn't stick very well, did it? That's okay. That'll be fine. Okay, box your corners. So bring your seams together with your bottom seam and match those seams just like that. And we're gonna stitch across those and close those up. And again, it's not a big seam allowance. One more. I'm kind of glad because this uh, <sighs> fraying fabric has been uh, a bit of a thorn. <laughs> Now we can turn this right side out. Look at this beauty. I can't wait to make one of these with vinyl. I mean, this is uh, this nylon fabric is beautiful too. So, but I have some ideas for some vinyl. Oh my cow. That is cute. This is something I need to burn here. Okay. Oh, uh, this is a great size bag. Look at that little cutie. Now, if you didn't want to put the water bucket bottle in, I'm rethinking that, whether I want to do it or not. Although, I carry water with me almost everywhere I go. 
because I try and drink a lot of water. I haven't done much water today, which is not good. All right, next step. All right, now we're going to do the uh, water bottle pocket. I wasn't going to do it, but then I decided uh, I want to do this pattern like she has it. And then the next time you make it, you can do whatever you want to, Barbie. So this is pattern piece um, L, the bottle sleeves. Put them right sides together, and we're going to sew the long edges at the seam allowance in the pattern. Just the long edges. Side out and I'll press it and then we'll top stitch that on the long edges. Okay, I'll turn around and top and uh, all right, it. let's top stitch down each long edge. And keep in mind, uh, I mean. Bonded nylon, you can iron, but you have to be very careful. And even the light, I'll show you the, in a minute. If you get your iron too hot or leave it on too long, I'll show you what it does. <clears throat> I don't know if Gabby recommends ironing this or not. Gabby, it Wonder Brown fabric where you get this stuff from. But it, it makes it kind of shiny. It's it's okay. It doesn't ruin it. But on both of them, it makes it kind of shiny. I don't know if you can see it. That's fine. All right, let's set that aside for a minute. Now grab both your piece Ks. And we are going to cut out the corners on both these pieces <clears throat> just like we did on the other one on the front uh, could find my scissors You know, the thing about uh, Kathy at K. Dunhead Made, she gives really good directions. And she's so nice that if you ever have, if you get one of her patterns, I don't think she'd mind me saying this. If you ever have any issues, just send her an email. I think she's pretty good about responding. At least she's been to me. I'm sure she will to anybody. All right, now. Take both your interior slip pocket M pieces. I'm getting low on pieces, which is a fabulous thing. And lay them right sides together. <clears throat> this is the slip pocket that we're creating here. So right sides together. And we're going to stitch all the way around and leave a turning hole here. Yep. 
so I'll leave a turning hole in one of the long ends. Doesn't need to be much. trim my corners. <clears throat> and I'll show you, many of you guys know this already, when you trim your corners, go up the sides a little. I went over on my stitches there, so I couldn't do it on that one. So go up a little bit on your sides when you're trimming. It does help to get a nice um, corner. All right, let's turn this right side out. And then we'll top stitch that turning hole closed. Now, I'm going to try not to iron this. I may need to. Let me see. Because this light definitely does get a little shine on it when you put heat on it. And it's not the end of the world. I mean, it doesn't look terrible, but it's noticeable. So, let me see if I can do it without. Yeah. I'm just going to top stitch across the top. Okay. I've got so many tools out right over here that it's like Tool City. over this and iron it so hold on all right so I'm gonna put this <clears throat> where she tells you to in the pattern and I marked my centers and I'm just gonna hold it it's probably not a good idea let's see how I do That didn't go well. Okay, let me try it again. Okay, there we go. Now, she tells you to separate the pocket. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do it. Let me see. So 
So she tells you to measure over a certain distance. And then over again. Two pen pockets. And then we're just gonna go down and divide those. And I, my guess is this is optional. You don't have to do this if you didn't want to. So, just an FYI. So there you have a slip pocket and two pin pockets. Let's see how these fat pins do. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Next up. All right, so next take your zipper panel. And I already have my zipper pull on. You can take it off if you want to. But on this one, with the slip pocket, your zipper pulls going to the right, this way. And we're going to center this on our lining piece and baste it in place. Just baste it. Eighth of an inch. Then we're going to take our um, interior facing pieces J <clears throat> and we're going to lay those down and I'm going to center this so I make sure I have it centered on both sides. And we're going to lay that face down. I don't know what happened here. And we're going to sew that together. At the seam allowance in the pattern. And then we'll turn it up and top stitch. If you let your zipper pull on, just be, be aware of where it is. That means. And uh, yeah, okay. The seam allowance you just created is going up. Although in this circumstance, I don't think it really matters. Sometimes it does. So that's what you have right now. Cute, 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 cute. All right, next step. All right, take your remaining lining piece right side up and lay one of your zipper pocket pieces in, as in Nancy, face down. And she gives you the measurements how to make your box here. And we're just going to sew around that box.
and then we'll turn it just like we did on that. I did use a couple straight pins to hold this in place because it was so slippery. You know me and straight pins, I don't like them. So I'll get rid of those as soon as I can. Cut a little hole there. Make your zipper hole. Careful not to cut your stitches. All right, so um, I did press that and it looks really good. And I did add my little, your very best, my little B on there. I did move the pocket out of the way and put that there. It's so cute. All right, let's add some double side tape here. If I can find my end. Yeah, I would say this is a very beginner friendly pattern. There's nothing, I mean, so far, I haven't, we haven't done the, the pocket, the bottle, water bottle, but I don't, can't imagine that that's too bad, but we'll see. All right, so now we're gonna put our zipper in there and I want mine closing to the left. I don't think it matters. You do you, because some people are left-handed and you may want it closing the other way. So. stitch around that and then we'll add the other side of the pocket. And I'm back stitching on this because it's pink on the Never see it. Oh, I left my stitch line short. That's all right. I'm going to be fine for this purpose. are just a little different though. It's kind of funny. I wouldn't think they would be, but they are. All right. Let me, let me fix my stitch length before I do anything else. All right, so that's what you have. Cute. Now let's take our other zipper pocket and we're gonna lay that on top. And we will Close that. I don't think we leave a hole. Yeah, we do leave a hole. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know about that. I don't know if I like that or not. Let's see. One side is a little longer. That's all right. Um, hmm. Okay, let me let me read through this. Hold on. So turn it right side up, and I'm gonna start down here on this over here on this side, 
and I just folded mine up a little bit. I'm going to see if using my pinky and shears on this will help. Honestly, I don't know. It won't go over my zipper. Let's see if it helps up here with the fraying. I think it should. Let's see. I didn't even think about it telling just this now. <laughs> yeah, that should actually help. Alright, so you have a pocket that has the bottom open still. Because I we're gonna finish through the bottom. I'll leave the bottom of the bag lining open and then I'll finish the lining through this. So I'll show you. There you go. Cute. Next step. All right. So take your remaining zipper panel and add that right side up. And if you're using the little key fob, um, I we put that over here. And let's just secure all that on there, baste it on. Make sure you center your zipper facing. The other additional thing you might want to do, and I did it, is lay your other lining piece. So you're sure that your zipper or your zippers are going the right way. So that's what it'll look like when they're together. I know it's a little detail, but it makes all the difference. All right, take your other top piece, J, and we're going to add that on top of our zipper facing. And we will sew that with a full seam allowance. You should see my floor in here. I've got pink thread <clears throat> and pink um, frays all over the floor. It's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. All right, let's sew that together and see what's in there. I'll go over my key fob. Couple times. Make sure your zipper pulls out of the way. Okay. Beautiful. Fold that up and top stitch. <coughs> So there you have your little key holder fob. I like these. You don't always, I don't, I rarely do them actually, but on this side, we are now going to add our bottle holder. Let me see.
Um, oh. Okay. Oh, okay. One, uh, just, she tells you the measurement up from the bottom cut out that we already did. Just gonna put a line there. And then I think I'm gonna leave the black on the outside and we're just gonna clip that in place. There. This is a cute little thing and it's not hard to do, so I would do it. So let's just base that in place. So that's all that is. It's just a little holder for your bottles when we put the bag together. So cute. It's worth it. All right. Let me make sure I caught all that. Yeah, I did. All right, next step. All right, so the next step is to put your two lining pieces together. So I have my two lining pieces together. Make sure your zipper, your zipper tab is out of the way. And uh, line up your top facings here on each side. And then we're gonna start at one seam allowance and increase it to another, just like many linings do. All right, so your right side should be right side out and your inside should be wrong side out. And we are gonna open the lining. Make sure your inside zipper, this zipper pocket is open. You can always open it. And I'm gonna put my, in, my interior zipper pocket in the back, that's where I want mine. You can do whatever you choose. She doesn't really tell you which one. Um, and then I am going to line up all my seams and clip them all together. Let's turn it through our zipper pocket. Just be gentle. You don't want to rip your zipper pocket for one thing. This material is easy to do this with, but normally if I was using vinyl, 
I would leave that whole bottom open on the lining and turn it through there and finish my lining bottom through my zipper pocket. But this material, no, not necessary. Look how easy that turned. That was pretty good. Oh my gosh, isn't that adorable? All right, let's close our zipper pocket off. And then we'll stitch around the top. I went out there and Tony was snoring and he didn't have his, his socks were halfway off. It's like he fell asleep trying to get his socks off. <laughs> so I put a blanket on him and took his socks off. He's still recovering, poor guy. He's very rarely sick. We neither of us are. Although I've been, I had COVID in October and now I have this. So, that's all right. This isn't bad. Just a stupid little cold. benefit to sitting right here on the front porch with my window open I can see who's coming and going <laughs> okay push that in there Clip around the top, and your facing is in, down, in. So just keep that in mind. Let me show you. So here's my facing. Here's my zipper facing. So the top is where your facing is, where you're clipping it. <coughs> That's not going to work. I love bags in general, so. Mm -hmm. You would think I have a whole closet full of bags, but I don't. I give my nieces bags when I don't use them anymore. And I give them to friends, whoever. Somebody comes over and they, they're like, do you have any new bags? And I'm like, yeah, go on in. Let's go look. Let's go shopping. And I, I most of the time, friends, most of the time I don't charge them for anything. Because most of the time they're used bags, so I don't charge them for this. Little thread right there. All right, let's top stitch. I'm just going to make sure I haven't forgotten a step. Yeah, I haven't, the zipper, closing the zipper or adding the zipper pull is the last thing. So we'll do that here in a minute. All right. Uh, yeah, let's start. Uh, let me see. I'm going to start the back. I'm gonna start, and I'm going to do it from the outside. Now this would definitely be easier on Thor, but I 
I'm just going to do it right here. I did it for years on my fabricator. I can do it again. Make sure all your hardware stays out of the way. Because there's a that keep off hardware is in there. This, I'll be making more of these. This is a very cute pattern. I think she has a bigger version of this. I don't know what it's called. I'm gonna have to go look. That is so cute. Excuse me. Oh my. All right, let me put the zipper pull on. Um, this is why I really prefer to leave the zipper pull on. Because after the fact, it's harder to get on there, personally. I think. Okay. Let's see. I think I might have it twisted, but we'll see. Nope, I don't think I do. Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, I got it twisted. Alright. Let me do it. Hold on. All right. Now, she just has you do um, a little zipper uh, end here. So I'm just going to divide this down the middle. Let me find my ruler.
Yeah, I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it a little differently than she does. She has cotton, which you can iron, which will iron real well. I am just going to do this. So I divide it down the middle. And I put two pieces of double side tape. And I'm going to fold those in, not all the way to the center. I'm just going to fold them in like a quarter of an inch or so. And then I'm going to put a piece of double side tape on each short end. So that's what you have, just like that. And then I am going to fold that in. I don't want any raw edges. That's not going to want to stick and stay very long. So I'm folding that in. Yeah. And then I'm just going to add that with another piece of double side tape. On both ends. So that's what I have so far. No raw edges. And I should have, let me mark the center. Let's see. Perfect. There you go. And I'm just going to stitch all the way around that. Nothing fancy. Oh, see, that didn't want to stay. Oh, I didn't undo my tape. <laughs> it's the small things, you know. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to do this part first, eighth of an inch, all the way around. If you have zipper ends, you could easily put a zipper end on here. And that would look really nice, actually. Beautiful. We are... Let me just check the pattern. But we are done. Oh. She has you... And I think I'm going to do it. The reason, the reason she has you leave the... Um, webbing long is she has you put rivets and I am going to do that so let me mark my rivet let me mark for my rivets I think I'm just going to do one she has you do two I'm just going to do one on each handle zipper so I can get in there.
and it is a little bit tricky. In fact, I'm gonna have to do it on my other machine. I'll be right back. You guys, this little roadie is so, this, I'm gonna be making some more of these. It's just the perfect little size. There's the back with your zipper and it goes all the way through the whole bag. It's huge. And then the front, or you can be, it could be the back. You have um, two slip pockets here and here. And then you have a zipper pocket here. And you have two handles, which I like. And then you have a top zipper closure. And on the inside, you have another zipper pocket. And on the other side, you have three slip pockets, one bigger one, one bigger one, and two for pins. And then you have a water bottle holder. Let me see, here it is. Water bottle holder, right here. And then I also put in a little key fob to hold your keys. I mean, <laughs> for a little bag, it, it does a lot. And it's easy. It's beginner friendly. You just have to take your time, just like with any bag. There's the roadie by KDL Handmade. This was the bag making B box materials. And the box this month, it's perfect. Look at that. Look at the bottom. The Roadie by K. Dale Handmade. Go get the pattern and give it a try. Thanks for watching.